complete explainer on uh, the implications there. Sona Mudasi is with us. He's senior fund manager uh, at uh, Tata Asset Management. Uh, he's uh, with us to take some questions. And I'm good to have you with us here. Uh, good afternoon, uh, Prashant, this side. Uh, you know, how are you guys uh, behaving in the market? Or rather, what are you buying? What are you selling? Are you more buying? Are you selling a little bit? And where exactly are you doing all of that? So just give us a primer first, because I think it's been a while since we spoke, uh, Sonam. Yeah. Uh, thanks, Prashant. Uh, so, uh, you know, we remain constructive. Uh, and luckily, uh, the market uh, has started to broaden itself. Uh, in the last two months, uh, uh, there has been a lot of uh, interest or perception around uh, sectors uh, which are large liquid like private sector banks, uh, IT, even consumption uh, and the expectation that the budget you know could give more to the common man uh, has helped some bit of broadening of that space. Uh, so there is a lot of interest on the capex and industrial side. Uh, that being said, it allows us to sort of uh, rotate some bit uh, you know weights. Uh, that being said, uh, we remain constructive. Uh, uh, you know, valuations are a little high, uh, but the tailwind itself is uh, pretty decent. Uh, we think economy is doing well. Uh, inflation seems under control. Monsoon is likely to be okay. Uh, you cannot have the best price at all times. So we we you know we take what we what we get and and we remain constructive. Mm. Uh, just one thing, uh, Sonam, and uh, you know, there's a lot of uh, a lot of stories. I mean, there are always stories in the market, but some are true, some are not true. And when markets are booming, uh, the percentage of stories which are not true uh, go up. We've seen that across cycles. Uh, are, are we uh, getting to a point where you're you're what should start to get a little worried? You know, narratives and stories in that sense. Uh, yeah, your thoughts. Uh yeah, yeah, I, I, I got your point. So uh, we are, uh, you know, our, you know, we are scrutinizing more, asking more questions uh, for our investment thesis. Uh, so you're right that sometimes narratives get ahead uh, of the reality. Uh, uh, you know, we think that there is still some scope, uh, both on the industrial side with the government focus on manufacturing. Uh, while, uh, you know, uh, there is scope for doing more, you know, for the con man and spending, rural spending, etc. Uh, the bigger delta for, for India on a GDP uh, front would still come from manufacturing because services is, you know, we are already at 54%. Uh, agree, we are trying to do something. But the next level of employment that, that you can generate uh, and get some investments in is from manufacturing. Uh, so on on the broader side, while there may be narratives on some of some of the themes and there are names and specifics, etc. Uh, that being said, uh, the overall tailwind on government policy, capex, uh, businesses, uh, and also the China plus Euro plus uh, you know theme that continues to remain resilient, and I think that will take us more time. Uh, do remember that a lot of the manufacturing, uh, uh, you know, sort of wilted away uh, when nothing happened for 10 years and, you know, there was no, no kind of return. So whoever is there and is left standing has consolidated and sort of become bigger. And therefore, in some of the cases, you are seeing order books, you know, five years plus and all that. Uh, so some of it will wilt away, uh, but there is, you know, uh, tremendous strength in some of the narrative uh, where you can find some reality. Uh, I was hearing you speak to the previous guest on, you know, power and etc. That theme looks real. Uh, there is a deficit uh, on the India side. Uh, there is a lot of demand on, you know, uh, you know, pa power itself. And then you want to do data centers and semiconductors. So that theme is very vibrant, uh, you know, within that, then you have to choose which, you know, companies or stocks have run ahead of the fundamentals and then take a view there. Sure, sure. And when we're talking about stocks running, PSUs can never be far behind. I just want to, you know, uh, point this out. 
we were discussing BHL. There are lots of other stocks. Just pull these up. Uh, you know, Hoodco is now building on those gains. as RVNL, IRFC, lots and lots of names that are uh, pointing to the north side. Even some of the uh, the metal names, Sale, uh, uh, RMDC, a lot of stocks, the PSU stocks, seeing more incremental buying this afternoon. So that's one part of it. The other is uh, banks and tier two banks. Just wanted to pull that up as well. So if you're looking at the likes of a Bandhan today or a Federal today, there's a lot of buying, 4 to 5% up on these stocks. Federal's, of course, update was excellent. Uh, we saw the numbers with the advances growth uh, looking very, very robust. Uh, but the others are also, I mean, there's general buying across the board in banks. Sonam, hi, good afternoon. Great to have you with us on the show today. So let's let's talk banking because finally the elephant seems to be moving. I'm talking about the, the large blue chip bank space. But from an investor's point of view, what's the better bet now? I mean, should you look at some of the tier two names like the ones that are doing well today? Should you just go back to the basics with the, you know, the likes of an HDFC or ICICI? How would you look at positioning the portfolio? So I think uh, within banks, the good thing is that overall, uh, whether it's a large bank or a medium bank, the valuations are still within longer term trends. Uh, there is still, you know, balance sheets are robust, NPA, NPA cycle remains under control for all banks. Uh, ROE profiles are decent. So for us really, you know, it's relative where we think credit costs can move up. Uh, and, you know, we want to tinker with that. Um, and this is one, you know, portion of the market where I can say that valuations are palatable. And, you know, that valuation is not a concern. So uh, we are doing both. We are both doing both mid and large, uh, wherever we find our comfort. Uh, more importantly, we are looking at uh, themes, we, we, you know, which can be more longer term, uh, where you know people are spending more on digital, uh, making their systems robust and underwriting robust. Uh, and if we find that, whether it's a large or mid, uh, you know, we are looking at it constructively. Mm. Hi, Sonam. Uh, good to see you on the show. Thanks a lot for joining in. Uh, you know, I recall, I think uh, you all were part of uh, the initial uh, uh, investors in Metro Brands. You all still hold on to that investment? Yeah, we do. We do. Uh, all right. Uh, but the specifics, uh, it, yeah. You know, that's, I, that's something that we have discussed in the past as well, I think. So, and I recall, you know, uh, even a few months ago or maybe a year or so ago, you all continue to hold on to that position. It's been a good one for you all. But let's get spice things up a little bit. Besides that, in your portfolio, I think you had stocks like Radico Khaita and you had uh, United Spirits. We had a new listing, by the way, I mean, Allied uh, uh, Blenders as well. And that management as well sounding very, very confident. So it seems there's a fair bit of penetration in this space. What is your view, you know, in terms of all these stocks? More focus on PNA. That's what's helping margins. You know, you have input costs that have cooled off as well. These stocks, well, they're dancing away to the bar, not to the bank. Uh, so bar and bank look similar for both of them, yeah. really. Uh, uh, that being said, <laughs> so, uh, you know, the I think the broader theme, the way I look at it is that as India gets richer at the margin, uh, you will have people who are leaving it up in certain cases. Uh, valuations are rich. There is no doubt about it. But there's fair bit of, you know, longer term trend legs here. Uh, there are few names, few listed names that are available here. Uh, and, you know, investor interest is therefore high here. Uh, we think longer term over the next five, 10 years, uh, the volume growth would continue to be decent. Uh, point to point and uh, and India is a young young country um, and uh, you know this space should therefore relatively tend to outperform the broader sort of consumption basket mm. so uh, what else part of the portfolio Radico I think you all had United Spirits uh, both yeah. those two or have, do you all have other so within, within the liquor space th these are the two these are the two that we own all right. What about Zomato? You know, I recall you all had that one. And now suddenly everyone's very excited. I remember when the stock had fallen off the cliff, there were a lot of naysayers. But they have been proved wrong because the stock is nearly around 200 rupees and there's plenty of interest out there. The only problem is there could be a formidable competitor coming in there to challenge them. Uh, how do you view it? 
So I think the space is large enough uh, and uh, in this, you know, the innovator and the guys who have, who are ahead in the game tend to have a lion's share of, you know, the overall profit pool if there was one. Uh, our view is constructive currently. Uh, we think there is both delivery and e-com uh, that is playing uh, for it, uh, well for it. Uh, there will be competition. Uh, that being said, it's early days, nascent days, uh, especially on the e-com side. Uh, I, I think they have a good strategy. Um, we are constructive. That's what I would say. Mm. Uh, from a slightly broader perspective, when we're discussing consumption, Sonam, I think a lot of people are wondering whether you have to shift the focus, uh, you know, towards the upper end of consumption or the lower end. Because now, for instance, I mean, the two-wheeler makers, uh, the, uh, the auto guys, They've had great sales and they've really started doing well. Even tractor sales are looking good, for instance. Uh, we heard that from Eminem this time around. So the question really is that do you continue to play top-level urban discretionary consumption, your jewellery stocks, etc.? Uh, or do you now shift some of that focus or that balance in favour of regular staples or maybe it's any other way of any other format of rural consumption? Uh, so, uh, our thought process is uh, very clear in this that over the next 5-7 years within consumption, the food, you know, uh, see as more women are joining the workforce, uh, whatever makes their life easier uh, would do well as a category. So, be it consumer appliances, be it ready to eat, be it food processing, that component of consumption we think would outpace everything else. And within that, if it's a rural focused or a urban focused, uh, we look at, you know, and there are many names there. So we tend to be overweight there. Uh, relatively, we think the other portions where penetration levels are quite high and it will be more volume led, we are slightly underweight in, in that space. Uh, spaces where, you know, the penetration uh, is low. Uh, I talked about consumer appliances. There is and low penetration on durables across India. There are decent players, market leaders. Uh, even in, you know, eating out is a theme that will continue to go up as more, you know, both men and women uh, continue to work. Uh, so I think that portion of consumption is where we want to sort of be, uh, you know, have a larger position in than the old, uh, you know, staple names that 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 may be more volume led so tactically right, uh, for the budget we might do something for staples i don't know i got that uh, point taken sorry. Uh, but, so maybe a tactical view not not a sorry, slightly more structural kind of uh, viewpoint at this stage <clears throat> thanks very much sonam for joining us great conversation as always and uh, <clears throat> look forward to our next one 160 higher on the uh, Nifty. We're up uh, at about 24,283. We'll take a break. We're back. We'll get you some.